This is Pastor Tony Kemp, and this is number eight in a series entitled Supernatural Freedom. My purpose in doing this is so that you can experience freedom from the uh, thoughts and operations of darkness so that you can come into the glorious liberty that you should have as a child of the Father. And secondly, so that you can identify how people get trapped by the enemy and, and, and how to set them free. And allow me to say this if I may. Please listen to these messages over and over again. Because in order for you to be transformed, it must be by the renewing of your mind. And your mind must be renewed by the Word of God. And you don't get a truth because you hear it once. Repet the father of all learning is repetition. And repetition is the best teacher. And whatever is repeated in your hearing gets in your spirit, then it gets in your mind, and then it becomes revelation, and then it becomes reality. So just like you heard the thoughts of the enemy for days, weeks, months, or even years, you need to hear the thoughts of God's word uh, for days and weeks and receive the word until it becomes revelation in your spirit and begins to transform Form the way you think and so then you become fully free and so my purpose in doing this is to share with you the word of the Lord and I allow me to say this as well you can go on to the website TonyKempMinistries.net and you can um, look on the store there because we have things that will help you to move in the Spirit of God and walk in the Spirit of God and enjoy life in the Spirit of God to live in the supernatural uh, because the Father wants you to have a supernatural life and a supernatural ministry in Jesus. Now we have been talking about um, basically supernatural freedom and how you can be saved or healed or delivered from shame. You need your mind saved from shame. You need the, your thoughts saved from shame. You need your emotions healed of shame. You need a life free from shame. And so Hebrews 12 and 2 says that Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith and that Jesus for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He despised the shame and he sat down at the right hand of God the Father. Romans 10 11 says that the scripture says that whoever believes on Jesus or into Jesus, shame is canceled in that person's life. And so the reason I'm giving you the word of the Lord is because I want to see shame canceled in your life. I want to see the, the, uh, the thinking of shame destroyed, the operation of shame reduced to zero. I want to see shame completely eradicated and, and removed I have no influence in and over your life any longer. And so let me now give you Ephesians chapter, uh, I believe it's Ephesians chapter 4. We'll start with verse 21. And it says, If so be that you have heard Jesus and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former life, the old man. See, this is the shame. Shame is the old man. Your old sinful life your own sinful ways of thinking, talking, and doing. This is all the old man. And Paul says, you know what? You need to discard it. You need to lay it aside. You need to get rid of it. You need to put it away. Put off concerning the former life, the old man, that is corrupt according to his deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. The way you're renewed in the spirit of your mind is you keep hearing the word, hearing the word, thinking the word, thinking the word, meditating upon the word. And so I want you to listen to this word of God day and night so that you could be changed, changed and transformed. Listen to me carefully. Information does not change you, but revelation transforms you. You are transformed when the information becomes revelation and you're released from bondage you come into freedom and liberty 
through the person of Jesus. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man, which is the revelation of Christ, who after God is created in righteousness and uh, 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 the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And so I want you to put on the new man. I want you to put on Christ. You are to become a new man. See, um, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, If any man comes into Christ, he's a new creature, a new creation. In the Greek it means you come into, uh, um, you, you become something that, that you never were before. You come into your original formation. In other words, you come into what the Father originally in, intended for you to be. When you come into your original formation, shame isn't there. Shame is reduced to zero. Shame is canceled. The old life, your life of sin, it's all canceled. It's all destroyed. It's all reduced to zero. And so, uh, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, something that never existed before. You come into your original formation, what the Father really intended. Old things are dead. They've passed away. And now all things are new, and all things are of God through Jesus Christ. And you're reconciled. You're brought into harmony with God. You're, you come into synchronization with God. You get aligned with God. And it needs to happen in your heart through the word, and it needs to happen with your mind. You need to think the thoughts of God. This is why 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says, you have the mind of Christ. And why Philippians 2 says, you let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You don't need the mind of shame. You need the mind of salvation that is in Jesus Christ. You need to begin to pray and say, Father, I want a saved man. I want a delivered man. I want a healed man. Father, save my emotions. Heal my emotions. Deliver my emotions by the power of the Holy Spirit and through the revelation of the word. So let me tell you something about somebody who has a problem with shame. Do you know what they do? Watch this. They take correction as rejection. And see, anybody who takes correction as rejection is in need of healing and in need of deliverance. And see, the reason I'm bringing this up is I want you to identify the thinking processes of shame and put off the old man because it's corrupt. Okay? It has wrong desires, wrong thinking, wrong belief, wrong believing patterns. It will not work for you. It will work against you. So put it off and put it away and begin to think according to the word of the Lord. And so listen to me carefully. A person who is married and gets divorced and is still in the spirit of shame, they still have anger and hatred toward their former spouse. Do you know what they'll do? They'll get divorced. They'll get remarried. But they'll bring their former spouse into that relationship because they hate them so much. And if their new spouse acts in any way similar to their former spouse, they will not react to what their present spouse is doing, but what their old spouse used to do, and they'll overreact, and they'll bring problems into that relationship. This is why you need to identify why you're thinking what you're thinking, why you're saying what you're saying, why you're doing what you're doing. You need to identify your thinking process, what you're reacting to. You need to learn how the Word of God tells you to think so you can react and respond differently and be free. You see, there is some things that I need to talk to you about. See, when you have soul pain, and soul pain is an evidence, emotional pain is an evidence of shame, when your spouse is silent, you're going to be thinking what you think they're thinking. Now, they haven't said what they're thinking, but all of a sudden your imagination runs away with you. I think he thinks. I think she thinks. And because of somebody is silent. And see, so shame can operate on different levels. For example, the mind, the spirit of shame, the spirits of darkness begin to lie to you. There are accusations. There are imaginations. They operate in the realm of your emotions. You got fear, particularly when there's a prolonged silence. Sometimes you don't talk. Sometimes they don't talk. It operates in the area of your will. You reach wrong conclusions. You make wrong decisions, which takes you into a wrong destination. You know, sometimes... When a person gets in the spirit of shame, if I can use this example to sort of lighten what's being said here, sometimes you will become a part of the Tater family. Um, 
And, and, and how, let me give you an example how this can work. Dad's got the spirit of shame operate, operating in his life, and he becomes the dictator, okay? Um, mom, mom's got the spirit of shame in her life, and she's the imitator. Uh, son's got the spirit of shame in his life. He's the spectator. And the daughter's got the spirit of, of shame in her life, and she's the agitator. And so here's what happens when you've got the spirit of shame in your life. You spectate and you don't participate, okay? You aggravate, rather, and, and so you, 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 uh, you blow things up rather than building bridges, okay? Uh, when you've got the spirit of shame in your life, you act like other people. You're not your true self. You become a chameleon. You become like the people that you're with. Nobody knows who you are. You don't even know who you are. Because the spirit of shame and the spirit of darkness is operating in your life. And you want to dictate to others. Because the spirit of shame will cause you to try to control others. Okay? And so, um, when you're in the spirit of shame, you never get your needs met and you cannot meet the name, needs of others. Let me tell you something that God Almighty did for the sons of Israel. When they were delivered out of slavery, they were delivered out of shame. They were delivered out of captivity. They were delivered out of bondage through the ministry of the prophet Moses, through the power of the blood of the Lamb, Exodus 14. They were set free through the blood of Jesus. Then they crossed through the Red Sea, and they're on their way into the promised land, but they get to a place called Gilgal. Gilgal is the place where, quote, their shame was rolled away. And so what you need to know is this. Um, what you will not reveal, the Lord Jesus cannot heal. You need to reveal to yourself, admit to yourself, confess to yourself that you have the spirit of shame operating in your life if you have been thinking what I've been talking about. And you need to have your own personal supernatural Gilgal experience where Jesus rose shame completely away. And see, you need to understand that shame can be a controlling spirit and will cause you either to be controlled by others or you try to control others. And so how you are healed of shame is you receive the unconditional love of the Father. You understand that the Father knows who, where you are. He knows how you think, how you feel, and he still loves you. The Father loves you just as much as he loves his own son, Jesus. And it is the love of the Father that saves you out of shame. And see, the reason you need to be saved and delivered from shame is because shame will make you numb. You won't even know what you're feeling. And you won't even know how to identify your feelings. But when the Father heals your feelings, your feelings come alive. And instead of your feelings being in the realm of darkness, your feelings are in the realm of light. And you feel love. You feel acceptance. You feel peace. You feel joy. You feel gladness. Listen to me carefully. Meditate upon the word of the Lord because right now, through receiving and responding to the word of God, you're coming into supernatural freedom through God's Son, the Lord Jesus.